Hello and welcome to a special episode of Queensland Weekender. It's tourism award season. Now those in the business gathered in Brisbane last night for the annual Queensland Tourism Awards. It's a bit of a salute to the top tourist operators and attractions. So we thought we'd continue the celebration and share with you some of those who took home gold. Let's kick things off with Queensland's Cultural Tourism Award, which went to Outback Pioneers. For more than a decade, the Kinnan family has delivered a swag of authentic experiences inspired by Outback culture and heritage. And our Dolby duo recently enjoyed some of those award-winning adventures. Longreach is well named when you think about it. This friendly town in Queensland Outback seems a long way from anywhere. <laughs> but you won't find a warmer welcome in the bush. Wow, Whoa. this place. Hey, g'day, how are you? G'day, how are you? The Welcome Hotel has been a long reach landmark since the 1920s. She's had a good old spruce up, and now she's a heritage cafe and a booking office for the Outback Pioneers. Tourist experiences that bring bush history to life. Everything from stagecoaches to paddle wheelers. Truly unforgettable experiences. If you have a Thursday or a Tuesday free, we've got No Go Station as well. No Go Station. That's a funny sounding place. <laughs> We're intrigued. Although only 20 minutes from town, it feels like we've turned back the clock 150 years. How are you? Good, thanks. Welcome to Nogo. Yeah, how are you? Lovely. Well, this classic country homestead is her family home and it has a lot of history. Well, this part we're in at the moment was built back in 1904. The part that's out over the other side is built back in 1880. 1880, gee, that's old. That is old. I bet you could tell you a story or two. Yeah, it probably can, if the walls can talk. <laughs> <laughs> Where does the station get its name, No Go? Back in the early days, the floodwaters, when the wet season, used to come up to this house yard fence, roughly. So no one could never get here, so it was called No Go. Ah. Well, it's all go now. Open for tours to visitors two days a week. What generous folk to open the doors to their home. Oh, wow. So this here is actually your lounge room? Yep. It would have been called the library room back in its day. Ladies would have had their handcraft. Their children would have their board games and card games. It's oh, good, mm. that should be. What a step back in time. The parlour room was used strictly for entertaining guests. The bedrooms, there's nine of them. Oh, wow. Shotgun the damn drops. Butter, eggs and flour. Simplicity has never tasted so good. Abigail's got a very own cookbook. Better not put it too far away. <laughs> How do you top off good old-fashioned hospitality? with somewhere to hit the hay. Back in Longreach, we're bunking in for the evening. Outback Pioneers have digs close to all the town's attractions. The Pioneer slab huts are pretty flash, in an old fashioned way. This is home. Or the homestead stables, just oh. you wait. Oh. This gets better and better, look at them lights. <laughs> Shotgun big bed. Why do you always get the ensuite? Oh, Luke, check out this copper sink. House rules would love this place. I it's wouldn't so change right. a thing. It's so simple, but so practical. And to top it all off, there's a sunset terrace with tubs open to all guests. After a day in the outback, there's no better way to wash off that bull dust than a twilight tub. Even oh. better, mate. If we wait a little longer, we'll be able to see them beautiful outback stars. Cheers for the beers, guys. Thank you. A 
Another iconic outback destination has roped in the gold for the festival and events category. The Mount Isa Mines Rotary Rodeo has a history stretching back 60 years. It's the largest rodeo in the Southern Hemisphere, bringing the romance of the Aussie bush to Queensland's rugged mining capital. The dust flies during a week of non-stop rodeo action. Look out for it during the month of August, year in and year out. Great to see our beautiful Outback take home two golds. Coming up after the break, another favourite Queensland event. The locals love it and visitors travel from all over to be part of it. No wonder the Toowoomba Carnival of Flowers continues to flourish. More than a botanical celebration, the carnival includes great live music, family entertainment and local food and wine. Held each September, the popular spring event recently celebrated its 68th year. From festival fun to adventure and our next gold award winner. Treetop Challenge is Australia's largest treetop adventure park and our very own daredevil Sammy was pretty quick to sign up. The forests of Tambourine Mountain are some of the southeast's most beautiful. Now, to take them all in, hiking is a good option, but to see them from an entirely different angle and get the adrenaline pumping just a little bit, there's something new here that'll do just the trick. The treetop challenge at Thunderbird Park, with its high rope challenges spread over three and a half hectares, has been entertaining visitors since 2007. But now they've got another trick up their sleeve. The Canyon Flyer, the largest guided zipline tour in Australia. It's the creation of adventure junkie David Taylor and his family. Today we're going to cross seven really big zip lines like you can see in the background. Um, so you're going to get really high, you're going to get really fast and you're going to enjoy nature at its finest. The Canyon Flyer takes up to three hours and is the most heart pounding way to explore the stunning Cedar Creek Gorge. People love it. It's such an adventure. Uh, it doesn't require much physical energy, but it does require you to be really, really adventurous and, and willing to have a go. And away you go. That was awesome, but it was just the warm up. All right, so this one is the biggest and baddest of them all. It's 220 metres long, 70 kilometres per hour, and we're about 60 metres off the ground. So uh, let's go. You Wish me go? luck. Awesome. <laughs> What do you think? Awesome. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. Scary? Very awesome. Super scary. <laughs> Something I haven't done before. Yeah. Did you do it again? Oh, definitely. <laughs> Without a doubt, one of the best things I've done. Yeah, yeah cool. Same. Good. That's one brave girl. Well, moving on to a different category now, and I'm sure everybody would agree that a good holiday starts with a comfy bed. Here are some of the accommodation winners from last night's Tourism Awards. Gold for deluxe accommodation was awarded to the ultra-modern Next Hotel Brisbane. Families travelling to the Whitsundays find it hard to go past Big Four Adventure Whitsunday Resort, winners of the gold for caravan and holiday parks. Families with children, listen up. I have found a place in the Wit Sundays where you won't blow your savings, but you will blow those high octane energy levels that kids seem to have in abundance, leaving you to enjoy some well-deserved relaxation. It all sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? Adventure Wit Sundays Resort is a big four tourist park in Airlie Beach, a frisbee throw away from the centre of town. The value is fantastic 
as little as $36 per night for a grassy spot to pitch your tent, or a slabbed one if you're towing a van. An ensuited site is just $20 extra. Cabins start at the bargain price of $95, through to three bedroom cabins offering two bathrooms and a very spacious living and dining area for $240 a night. Even though the waters of the Whitsundays are almost lapping at your door, you could easily arrive and never leave the resort because everything you need for a great holiday is right here. There is so much to do. Now girls, are we racing or not, or just cruising? Just cruising. Trikes aren't the only thing to keep kids on the go, but free to enjoy any time. Giant jumping pillows, <laughs> a playground, putt-putt, tennis, and a lagoon with water slides. Okay, this is a regular occurrence. For a gold coin donation that goes to a good charity, you get the best, thank you, brekkie ever, pancakes by the pool. These look great, thank you. Maple syrup or lemon and sugar, who doesn't enjoy a fresh pancake? Okay, so what's your favourite thing to do in the park? Swim. Swim? Here at the pool? Yeah, go down the slide. And you fall into bed exhausted at night time? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like how they have the petting zoo as well. The petting zoo? They have baby worms. Baby worms? Man. I thought you said worms. Definitely no worms, but you will find plenty of cute critters to make friends with. Like this gorgeous lamb, Molly. She's just five yeah. weeks old. It's a labour of love for owner Greg McKinnon. He and his family have had the park for 24 years. And, much to children's delight, introduced the petting zoo about a year ago. You like you look around here and the kids have never touched little sheep before, never fed a bottle. And that's just one of the little things we do. But then you've got the beautiful Wood Sundays, you know, you've got the islands. Yeah. But you hardly need to even go and look at them. There are so many happy, smiling faces just here in the yeah, park. That's what we tried to create. It was exactly what we tried to create a, a destination in its own right. And the, the Wood Sundays is a great advantage that we have as well. The Big Four Adventure Wood Sunday Resort makes a holiday to this beautiful region affordable. Have a look at their website for prices and bookings. Just when you thought you couldn't possibly fit another activity into your busy day, they have got Cinema Under the Stars, the most perfect way to finish your day. Coming up after the break, recognition for an eco-tourism leader. I need to put this one on my travel list. Welcome back to Queensland Weekender and our special tourism awards show. Queensland is blessed with some of the most magnificent island resorts in the world. And beautiful Badara took out gold in the luxury accommodation category. Now that's one to definitely add to the bucket list. But up next, Lucky Liz with the gold winner for ecotourism. Lady Elliot is a coral cay that sits about 80 kilometres northeast of Bundaberg, situated within a highly protected green zone, making her an animal encounter hotspot. And here we go, we can start to see the first bombing coming up here. That's not only my guide today, but also a qualified marine biologist who works at Lady Elliot Island Eco Resort. Bombies, all it is, it means an underwater mountain. So it's just an outcrop of coral. There's not much else there around it, just sand. And you can see the life around this bommy. So there's plenty of fish down there. And that's not the only marine life these reefs attract. So we do get three different types of turtles around the island. So that's one thing we can definitely guarantee, as well as the coral always out there. We've been on the water for just over a minute. We are about 200 metres from shore and I think I've already clocked up five turtles. This is absolutely incredible. It's turtle madness out here. The blue water of the Great Barrier Reef beckons. It is the most beautiful avatar down there. I don't think there's anything as peaceful as snorkeling. Last year, Paddy rated the island the number one spot in the world for manta rays. And of course, there are also plenty of turtles and fish. If you can't get enough from under the sea, 
Feeding the fish from above the water is another way to experience the marine life here. Whoa! See this bigger one that's coming around here? Yeah, so that's a Moses perch. So he's kind of yellowish with that black dot on the back. It's pretty incredible. You can tell that this area is a green zone. I mean, the turtles come to you, the fish come to you. There's no fear. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Like the, the ecosystem itself is so healthy and um, the, the main thing for a healthy reef is that to have biodiversity. You can see how diverse it is out here. And it's thanks, thanks to that uh, marine protected area, you know, the fact that we have that green zone that extends seven nautical miles around the island. You're probably looking at about 1,200 different species of fish. Whenever I come to places like this, I'm always amazed at how you can have such a good time but also learn so much. Do you love imparting that knowledge with visitors? Oh, definitely. I think it's one of the most important things about um, working on this island is creating that awareness and letting people know that it is worth saving. Today is a day when I don't need reminding that Queenslanders have the best address in the world. What an enchanting underwater world. There's another thing to add to the list. But next, a magical experience awaits deep in the lush tropics. I'll see you after the break. Paranala Park is pure enchantment, a fairy tale kingdom where every stone tells the story of one man's dream. In the 1930s, Jose Paranella, a passionately romantic Spaniard, built this magical place deep in the rainforest of North Queensland, not far from Innisfail. This was the inspiration for Jose. Keeping Jose's dream alive is Mark Evans. He and his family have welcomed tourists here for more than 20 years. Now, this is it. This is the waterfall that caused Jose to decide he wanted to build his dream at Mena Creek. Jose was ahead of his time, is that fair enough to say, with this hydroelectric vision? Uh, that hydroelectric system was built in 1933, the first river-driven hydroelectric system in Queensland. So, yeah, he was well ahead of his time, and I think the part that really surprises, he was a pastry cook. He was not an engineer or an architect. Amazingly, it's still in working order more than 80 years on. Wandering on, this area of the gardens is a crowd favourite and no doubt the most photographed in the park. The fountains, the tennis court and the lower refreshment room. And it this, really this is... This is the lower refreshment room. This is where people had their ice creams and drinks and sat and watched their friends play tennis. And this is back in the 1930s 30s, or 40s. 40s, yeah. Jose Paranella was clearly a romantic, but a truly inspired Spanish gentleman, wasn't he? He was. What, what was he trying to achieve here? Look, I, I think when you walk particularly through this part of the park, the cowries, these cowries are now 80 years of age and he could picture these trees 80 years on, but I think more important than that, he could picture these trees 200 years on. And I think there'll be people walking down this avenue in 200 years time and marvel at the work that Jose... And the vision, did. and the vision that he had. Yeah. He was also driven and encouraged by love, wasn't he? There was a, a, a marriage uh, which had been uh, arranged uh, to Matilda. He arrived in Australia with that plan and after 11 years, he went back to Barcelona to discover Matilda had cleared off with another guy. Well, I'm not surprised, really. I mean, 11 years. <laughs> yeah, family were a little embarrassed, but they said, look, why don't you marry our other daughter? Oh. And he, he finished up marrying Margarita, and I suspect that was probably not a bad thing. Everybody loves a good story, particularly when there's a bit of romance yes. around yeah. it. Romance and a bit of intrigue, yeah. and I think Jose had bucket loads of that. Whether you visit by day or by night, Paranella Park is a lush, 
secret sanctuary inspired by a romantic Spaniard. So really, what's not to love? If you'd like more information on anything you've seen today, our website has all the details. You can keep up with our travels on Facebook and Instagram. Congratulations to all the winners in this year's awards. And a big thank you to everyone in the industry who's helping us make the most of this magnificent state. Well, that's all we have time for this week. Go to our website for a full list of award winners and join us next Saturday for more holiday ideas.